One of my favorite quotes ever is something from the Bible. King Solomon asks his wise men to forge him a ring. He said, let this ring bring me up when I'm down, and when I'm too up, let it bring me down. I'm referring to modesty and balance, and what kind of ring could both serve these purposes? They came back with a ring that said, this too shall pass. Genius, I thought. Thanks for being here today. God bless you all, and welcome. A normal person would just watch a video. I stop watching and immediately jump on and hit screen record. This was shared by Mick at Rebel Without a Pause, and he's been hitting these dry stone walls or famine walls for months, if not years now, and I've just watched and been absolutely mind blown, but have not shared any of it. Just things get in the way. And here today and tonight, he shared a video. I'm about a quarter way through and we're going to check this out. Let's zoom out and I'll show you where we are. This mountain is called Ben Dirg. Look at this little moundage. And this is super cool. I'm really excited to share this with you. So we're in Scotland, not too far away from the Loch Ness Monster. Monster would be down here somewhere. And let's zoom out a little more. Scotland is up here, the UK, Ireland on this island here, divided into two, north and just Maine. Well, anyway, back to Scotland here, way up here. We see this crack running through the land, Fort Augustus in these artificial canals, and back to our point of interest. Here we see the mountain, and here we are. I should give you guys a little backstory. So they tell us about the great potato crop failure of 1845, causing people to starve. And let me just show you some pictures. Here are a little example of a famine wall. These babies are in the middle of nowhere. And perfect. Look how perfect. In this time period, not even any well-traveled roads next to it. Anyway, these things run up and over mountains, traversing the land. And the most interesting thing about these famine walls is the narrative. Well, not really the most interesting thing, but... The narrative tells us these were built for no reason. They tell us the people were so poor, without their potatoes, so hungry, that the well-to-do would give people food. But they didn't just want to give them food for nothing. They made them work. They made them build these pointless walls, the famine walls. What a great idea. Not. No. What a stupid story that is for these perfect works of wonder. And these are clearly from a pastime, once part of something great, now just pockets of survival. Here again, a little look at some wall. A section of famine wall at Salt Hill Pier. The wall and pier were built as poverty relief work in 1846, but it fell into disrepair. And look here, come on. You're gonna give the people some food and they're gonna go burn off the calories? while building these pointless walls? Do these really look like pointless walls? Or the remains of something wondrous, now just totally cooked out and brittle, hence why they call them dry stone walls. And here another little look at some walls just snaking up the mountain. Clearly preserved pockets of survival here, especially with the stupid narrative. No starving person is coming up here and building a wall. No. Anyway, let's jump back on the Google before I get upset. Here we can see it from the air, or at least part of it. I mean, look at where we are. This 
is so out of the way. Here's the main road down here. Let's take a little measurement. A little measurement from the road to this wall is four miles. Four miles trekking through the Scottish bush. You saw the pictures. I mean, this is not a friendly environment here. This is not the place he would go and build a wall. Even if it was just for some stupid reason, like they tell us, well, you still wouldn't go up here into the high mountains and build these walls. You would build the walls around town. You'd make useful walls for the people who were feeding you. Down here, maybe. A little coffee shop and crafts gallery. But no, way up here, we have this wall. Look at this wall. Look at the straightness. And what do they offer us? Here we can see some of it. A beautiful waterfall. And here's some more wall. So just everything in ruins, just all of this must have been structure. Without this wall, one would have no idea. They would think all this was natural. But we have a very advanced wall, straight as an arrow, up here. Doing a little turn, running this way, running up the mountain, and then Google schmearing it. Uh, how they love to schmear. Here they don't want us to see this part, so they've just put this artificial cloud over it, blending the cloud in with the landscape so most people won't know the difference but we know and why did they not want us to see this part is there some structure remaining here's the last photo they offer ah looking very very interesting much more structure like and how about over here what is the last photo we have one up here really interesting well, let's just focus on what is available. Here we continue with this wall. Look at this thing. Miles and miles and miles. I mean, just straight. Here we have a photo. Look at this up in the snow. And the little town is called Ulupul. And I think the mountain is Bendirg. Unbelievable. So as always, don't let me tell you anything. What do you think? Was this built by starving, potatoless people? Or is this something else? Up here, on top of the mountain, the worst possible place to build in this time period by starving people. Everything stacked against you. And yet here it is. And here it runs to this lake. Let's see this photo. So here the wall runs to this lake in the middle of nowhere. And this is nothing. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of these walls all over the place. I suggest you check out Mick's channel. He's done a great job of showcasing these. But this one, just up here in the middle of nowhere, really caught my attention. And I thought I would share. This is a weird segment. Weird segment, take one. This was shared by... A Russian channel, and I believe this is a Russian channel. And I love looking at such things, such videos, because I have no idea what they're saying. And sometimes it's better. And I tried not to tell you what to think. I always tell you I don't know. And it's similar to saying something rude or expressing yourself in a negative, reactive way. It's usually better to say nothing. And really interesting ruins right from the get-go, though not what I wanted to show you. And she was really interesting, kind of having a Mozart founding fathers kind of look. But here's what I wanted to show you. These manhole covers. And again, I have no idea what they're even saying in this video. I'll leave the link to the video, and if any of you speak Russian, let me know. But... If I knew nothing, which I don't, I would think this was some kind of a map. Here it says Pam. Backwards, it would spell map. But again, I know nothing. This was just really fascinating. If it was just one, I might just brush it off. 
and down here we see what look like coordinates on the bottom here some kind of coordinates east and north and again pam or map rex l gs maybe geological survey unbelievable what if there was more to the impressions in these manhole covers here's another example of one here again we can see pam or map and having some kind of meaning no doubt not just some stupid and random design here in the center we see some hub and really quite possibly depicting something about the under realm this being a map and the entrance on the surface as i've discussed before could be the great and glorious buildings clearly some of them some stations linking the subway for example and people come out from underground into a structure, into a terminal. And here, really lending to this idea. Again, it's like I'm just some tourist, just wandering around, stumbling upon such a thing. That's all I have. All I have are these images. And my intuition. We all have such things available to us. And we, of course, discuss that this realm is like a circuit board. A machine, each building playing a role, acting as a capacitor, and all the moving parts we would find in modern circuitry. And here when I look at these manhole covers, that's exactly what I think of. And recently, Streets of Tartaria has shared a location out in the desert, looking like some Nazca Peruvian lines, but out in Utah, showing an exact similarity to this. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. My photos never cooperate. Oh, here it is. Okay, here it is. So here are the coordinates, and there's two plug holes, and it really looked crappy from the Google, but it looks even worse in this picture. But all sorts of intersecting lines out in uh, the Moab desert topic we will have recently discussed dealing with Moses and this is in the mosaic area of our recent explorations two plug holes and when you see it from above everything linking like a hub but anyway where did everything go total total digression let us get back to our manhole covers so this one is really fascinating and how about this one? Now perhaps these marks are showing ways through the chamber, or perhaps they're instructions for the machine. Perhaps this is the underground magnetron, and these are the locations of the components. I don't know, of course. Here again we see Pam and the little building, the little old world looking building in its simplest way of understanding it through a pictograph. And we also see this symbol that's used all throughout, right in the middle, for the Rex L. Let me know if you know anything. This is really exciting. It's like alien, but, but human. Our past. Super cool. And here is this depicting a plug hole. It seems like they all have depictions of plug holes. And here we can see the top. Now this one was very Star 40 looking. It'd be really interesting to know where these locations are. And I think she's actually going to show us. And up here we see Hydrotech. So clearly a manhole cover dealing with water, hydro. In fact, someone was saying in a comment recently in Canada that they just call the power hydro. And here, hydro tech. This is like some old coin, but it's an old manhole cover. It says tech, and it looks like a star fort. Plug hole in the center, and the parts to the component. I mean, what if the building is just to cover up the tech, which we've discussed, just to protect the tech. The tech is more important than the building. And then, of course, everything malfunctioning, having a meltdown during a past reset, everything being connected. How old is this man cover? I would love to know. I would love to speak Russian right now. Look at this symbol, looking a little Chinesey, but don't know. Do you know this symbol? Sorry if you can hear the bone boiling in the background. I'm making a bone broth for my creatures. I think I may have a little spoonful to force myself to. And here is the Star Fort, I guess. God, I would love to know where this is. Port de 
basil and port the before something over here awesome so exactly what i was thinking and where was that manhole cover what if it's right here in the center in reality and here we see some other clues and just really seeming like a machine and a circuit board and this is so old these old depictions there's thousands of them Someone's drawing these out. Somebody's laying out the land like this all over the realm. Yes. And here we go. So we are in Germany, it appears. Zurich, Switzerland down here, Belgium, and Frankfurt. So excellent. Really cool that we can share research with each other, even with the language barrier. And here, how convenient we see a, a mine and they flooded out this whole area. This would have been interesting to see what was once there. And here we go, just zooming in. Is this where the manhole cover is gonna be? Oh no, that's the star fort. So you see the star. So they have completely planted trees on that star fort that we were just looking at. Fortification, Fort Louise. The same here in Germany, just like everywhere. So is the manhole cover down here? Oh, here's another one. So you see what they do. And we know. But here we go. Maybe the manhole cover is down here. Very exciting. I'm not sure if we're going to see the manhole cover, but we know that the plug holes still exist. For some reason, they leave them as if the controllers know the importance of them. I saw one down there, actually, by that little house. Plug hole right there. Oh, super cool. Now she's taking us there. So look at these brick ruins. Just almost unrecognizable as brick. This really reminding me of the video I did a past few videos ago featuring some of Emily Suzanne's boots on the ground up in Maine showing these very sophisticated star fort ruins hidden amongst the brush and that's exactly what we're seeing here in Germany now. And here again, just buried. Bricks buried into hillsides. Again, look at the condition of this brick. Where is the structure? What is inside of here? Well, again, tying back to these manhole covers. The first, perhaps, maps? And I don't know. I just don't know what they are. I don't want to say I know. And here, look at these ruins. How beautiful and it's all brick all of this is just buried and up here trees growing clear up here on top of this structure i wonder how this video is going to turn out with the boiling in the background i think i've done it before once with beets and here we go just some tourist area just some bs story and of course i'm not going to do it justice but here we can see the sharp corners of the star fort and here's some older pictures of inheritors just left with a mess and perhaps this was the fort. Really beautiful. Even the ruins are beautiful with these symmetrical portholes. Look at all this brick. Millions of brick. And doorways going into underrealms that have now collapsed. So much going on here. And here we go. Here are those lower doorways, I'm guessing. Just some of the worst condition to find brick in. And just looking like some kilns on the inside, as usual. Looking like the inside of my old coffee shop, really. Condition of these bricks and the color. So, here we go. Fort Louise on the Rhine. Little star fortage even across the river. Look at these just little odd features. I'd love to know what year this is. Just star fortage everywhere. And here we go. This is what it looks like today. So just unbelievable. When you see the ruins, just how much work was involved. We see where it was, and then we see what it looks like today. Shit. Inheritors. Rewriting history. And look at this brick. And this brick is just unbelievable. I mean, even today, if we build a brick house, maybe three courses thick, if you're lucky. This is like 10 courses, 20, just a mess. Who is making just mass chunk brick walls like this? And now they're in ruins? In modern times, they're in ruins? Unbelievable. Of course, such things could return to what would look like mountains. They're so thick. And here a rendering of what it may have looked like, and it's Glory. Vous êtes ici. You are here. I don't know, maybe we're not in Germany. Here again. Just so advanced. <laughs> Such machines in the old world. And here again, what condition they're found in. 
such a disconnect between these drawings and present time. Like we just lost history, oftentimes just discovering these things. And here she's holding a brick. Maybe she's into meltology. You're a very great example. Okay, I think that is it. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think of the manhole covers or anything else that you want to talk about? This is something I've wanted to share forever. Something about 1800s menus. I just got back from Colorado, Chief and I, and we went and visited the old pipe. I've shown you the old pipe before. Everybody will think it's something different. Some may think it's part of a tree. Some a blood vessel. But I think it's an old rusty pipe embedded in some old, old, old block work. And in fact, this place is littered with petrified metal bits like this pipe here. Just scattered all over. Even when you bang them together, they sound like metal. But I want to look at menus today. But how could I not show you this? It's fresh on my mind. And I don't know what to do with this area. I'm glad it's my little secret. I should probably be excavating, maybe busting some of this apart. But now for this video. This channel is Adam Ragusso. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it doesn't matter. He was showing this book on old menus of America. Or maybe the whole world. I think it was America. I really do think it was all America. We'll see here in a minute. He tells us the name of this book, and I looked it up, and it was $200. Maybe one day. But for now, I thought we would just glean his video. Sorry to be so cheap. And here's the title of the book. Menu Design in America. So all this will be America. Yeah, and like I said, it was $200. But to me, it was mind-blowing. What people were eating, drinking, and ordering from menus in the early 1800s. So right off the get-go, we see mouton, which is sheep in French. In America, they would say mutton. Something that's not eaten today. And here we have tongue from the 1800s in America. And more or less, they had a French feel all over the country. Every menu from the 1800s at the bottom said demi tasse or half cup. Demi tasse, like you're supposed to know that that's a small cup of coffee. Really lending to the past civilization in the Americas having this French influence. And the last traces of it being in New Orleans and in Quebec, in Canada. Pretty much being these few isolated pockets. But yet, when we looked at these old 1800s menus from all over America, they were very French. And again, my family was in the restaurant business, the French restaurant business. And I love menus. I love to study their layout and content and everything. Everything about it is just fascinating. This is a book I hope to purchase. I think well worth it because it tells an excellent story of our strange past, the beginning of it in America. Well, I think that's it for this week. Thanks for being here. I just want to remind you that if you see me commenting anywhere, it's probably not me. Thanks for joining me this week. Do have a blessed day. I love you all and I'll see you soon.